Good afternoon. It's a special edition of ESPN Sports. Just South of Bruce takes on Riverdale in game two. And live from the Diamond, here's the voice of the Tarpons, Casey Justclair. Thank you very much, Joey D. We are live here in Galliano for the second game of this best of three series between the South Lafourche Tarpons and the Riverdale Rebels. Casey Justclair here with Coach Brian Colley, partner. We saw a thrilling game yesterday between the Tarpons and the Rebels. It was a 2-1 to one outcome for the Tarpons. They got a walk-off base hit in the seventh inning by Casey Gidger, who also pitched a complete game on the mound. Now the job is simple. You got to beat these guys one more time today. You got two chances to get that done. And in the first game, you're going to be led on the mound by your senior left-handed pitcher, Blake O'Gell, who was undefeated in district play, the District 7 4A MVP. So I think the Tarpons like their chances heading into game two today. Yeah, you're in a great situation with your ace on the mound. you at home. The only difference is going to be we're going to be the visiting team uh, for this contest here. I was speaking with Coach Rav last night, and you know I said, let's just get out there and we bat first, so let's put some runs on the board and put a little bit of pressure on uh, Riverdale. For Riverdale yesterday, they got a good pitching performance from Kyle Collette, but in the seventh inning, the Tarpons put some pressure on them, made some things happen, and they got the run that they needed. And um, I think Coach Rav maybe found something that he liked last night. The Tarpons were aggressive on the bases, and I think that they're going to be trying to steal and bun and generate some offense today because I think they like some of the opportunities that they created last night with their running game. And very aggressive on the base pass. I'm sure he's going to continue that for this game here. And also, we talked about it again, their defense last night was tremendous. They made some outstanding plays at third base and Mark Petrie. Uh, JLB, again, consistent in shortstop. And Davin Rishu, a couple of nice plays. Uh, got taken off the bag a few times and just made the tag for the, for the out. I wanted to let you guys know, uh, I know that I said on the YouTube broadcast last night that I was going to go back and watch the game and let you guys know about that count situation. The umpire had the count right. I had the count wrong, so I apologize to Blue. That's why they're getting paid the big bucks to get the call right. We have the same three guys today, and we're looking forward to another well-played game with one spot available in the round of eight in the quarterfinals. The winner of this series will meet the winner of West Wachita and South Terrebonne. West Wachita won game one of that series with just by a run. So we'll see how that series shakes out. We'll see how this series shakes out. And by the end of the day, we're going to know whether the Tarpons advance and then also whether the Tarpons have their opponent for the next round should they go on to the quarterfinals. I don't th know if my headset was working. Can you repeat? You uh, I was wrong. 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 I was wrong. It, it happens about once every three, four years. It's like a leap year. It happens every once in a while. But we. Uh, That's what I mean. That's a huge news. <laughs> huge news. It, it is. There are people blowing crawfish, having a good time here at the park. We've got one game scheduled, another game written in pencil for after if Riverdale gets the win, but we would like to finish it off here in game one. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we get back, our home team starting lineup brought to you by Lady of the Sea General Hospital and then the first pitch brought to you by State Bank and Trust Company. You're listening to Playoff Baseball here on ESPN New Orleans and 1600 AM KLEB. control problem. Ron Tree's Pest Control and Supplies has an experienced staff.
Fusion Riverdale will be starting here in just a few minutes. Yesterday's game was a thriller, a two to one game decided by a walk off base hit from Casey Guidry. And now we're gonna have what we expect to be another pitcher's duel today. We were telling you about E.D. White and Loyola just a minute ago when we did our research during the commercial break. E.D. White won series two to nothing. So they're ahead one nothing in their best of three series. And they're gonna be looking to close out later today as are these Tarpons. Looks like the wind is blowing gently out to left field. So if you get it in the air, in this warm air, you've got a chance. We've also got a scoreboard update. Homa Christian is leading Vermilion Catholic 4-3 to three in the fifth inning. There's a starting lineup for Riverdale. Kyle Collette, the center fielder, number 15. Zach Schneider, the right fielder, number 21. Brennan Baudry, the first baseman, number 9. Diego Zapata, the second baseman, number 12. Will Flynn, the third baseman, number 5. Eric Chasson, the DH, number 7. Manny Rosado, the catcher, number 18. Ryan Martin, a new guy in the lineup today, the left fielder, number 6. And Rinske Hisashima, the pitcher, number 2. And Alan Castro is in the lineup today, not batting, playing shortstop. For the Riverdale Rebels. They came over here yesterday, coach, played a good game on the road, but now they're going to have to, in a short turnaround, pick up the pieces and put together another good performance. And we had some of them, I believe some traveled back home to Riverdale, some stayed in the area, a uh, local hotel. Yeah. I ran into some of them this morning on the way coming to the park. They definitely had a group that was staying at a hotel here in town. They chose uh, in pregame not to not take batting practice before this contest here. I guess they figure uh, unless if Blake Ogell's throwing batting practice to him, I don't know how much <laughs> of an assist it would be. It has to be tough on this team. Uh, they played their hearts out yesterday, and uh, they let the game slip away yeah. from them, but the Tarpons took the game from them uh, at the very end. So their morale could be down, but they have no choice but to bounce back because it's uh, do or die for Riverdale. And what about the range of emotions? Riverdale played a 10-inning game on Tuesday, then a thriller yesterday. I mean, I don't know how much more emotionally these guys can be able to take, but we'll find out here in about five minutes as the starting lineups are being announced for the Tarps. We'll get those to you in just a minute, but we'll get the national anthem and everything as well. On just another beautiful day for baseball. It's going to be, what, probably about 81, 82 degrees, gentle breeze blowing, a lot of sun in the sky, and a lot of tarpon faithful in the stands. And now we'll pause as we'll have the national anthem here at Eddie Blanchard Field. And we'll honor America here with the national anthem. And now we play ball, as Coach Colley was saying in the pregame. The Tarpons are the visiting team at home here for game two. 
in game three, or would they be a home team or would they flip a coin? I know in college you flip a coin in game three. I'd go back to being the home team. Go back to being the home team. So we'll figure that out should there be a game three. The Tarpons would like to end it right here. South Lafouche will be seeing another lefty pitcher, which is Rinsuke Hasashima. We saw him yesterday as a hitter. Pretty good athlete from what we're told. He's a pretty good pitcher as well. And he'll be facing the home team starting lineup brought to you by Lady of the Sea General Hospital batting leadoff Jacob Danos, the catcher number 32. Batting second, the center fielder number 23, Austin Cantrell. Batting third, the pitcher number 10, Blake Ogell. Batting cleanup, the designated hitter number 13, Casey Guidry. Batting fifth, the first baseman number 26, Davin Rishu. Batting sixth, the third baseman number 12, Mark Petrie. Batting seventh, the second baseman number 5, Jack Blanchard. Batting eighth, the right fielder number 17, Luke Chasson. Batting ninth, the left fielder number 6, Bo Kale. And playing in the field today, not in the lineup, is Double Deuce, Jelby Sheremy, number 22. Same umpire and crew from last night's game. Just, just going to rotate over one. Third base umpire will move to first. The home plate umpire goes to third. And first base umpire is now behind the plate. These guys did a good job last night, as you would expect a playoff crew to do. And it'll be Danos, Cantrell, and Ogell with a clear objective to try to make Hasashima throw a bunch of pitches, get into that Riverdale bullpen. With Riverdale needing to win two games today, it's very important to them that Hasashima goes deep into this game because you don't want to use every arm that you got in the tank knowing that you still would have to win a second game later on today as well. Yeah, very simple for the Tarpons. Win one, move on to round three in the state playoffs. Which would begin next Friday, another weekend series. In Galliano, in yep. home, at home. At home, Jacob Danos will stand in, the catcher number 32. He led off the bottom of the seventh rally. Yesterday with a hit by pitch, the first pitch of the game brought to you by State Bank and Trust Company is a ball wide 1-0. and Wind blowing out to left field. The young man working from the stretch and the pitch. Inside corner for a strike, 1-1. One one. We'll see here both teams throwing their ace. Might be playing a lot of small ball in this game. The 1-1 one, one to J.D., that's wide, 2-1. Okay. Trying to get runners on, advance them quick, and get some cheap runs. And the 2-1, this young man is breezing, but it's high, 3-1. We would take a leadoff base runner. Tarpons like their matchups running against Rosado, though it does look like Hasashima is to the plate much quicker than Colette was yesterday, so it may be more difficult to run. 3-1 is a strike and it's three and two. To Jacob Danos, number 32, Tarpon catcher. The stretch and the three two pitch. Swing and a miss, one away. So good job by the pitcher battling back. He was behind in the count and he records the out. And now Austin Cantrell will stand in. Batting for the Tarpons, the center fielder, number 23, Austin Cantrell. Austin had one of the plays of the game yesterday, and it's something that no one's really going to talk about. With two strikes, he got down a bunt in the bottom of the seventh that allowed all runners to be safe. It was a big play in the game. The first pitch he sees is grounded weakly to the shortstop. Fields clean, throws to first, gets him by a step. Ooh. For the out, Austin was hustling, but Castro flips it to Baudry for the out. Austin showing some speed right down at first baseline. The pitcher, number 10, Blake Ogan. And now pitcher versus pitcher, the District 7-4A MVP. Look at Hasashima telling his left fielder, hey, come in. He must not be aware that Ogel could go to the opposite field with some power. We'll see if he chooses to do that. The pitch is wide, 1-0. I want to keep an eye on this game at shortstop. I saw in pregame in the batting practice, what an uh, infield, taking infield, outfield. Took a couple of bad bounces out there. The infield is dry as can be. The 1 0 pitch is a strike. It's 1 and 1. Look, that's not a fault to the coaches. They've watered the heck out of it. It's just as soon as they put water on it, the sun takes it away. The 1 1 no gale is wide, 2 and 1. Yesterday's hero, Casey Guidry on deck. He pitched a complete game and got a walk-off hit in the seventh. The 2-1 chopped to the pitcher who will field 
has time to make a throw. He does. It's low, but he gets him in time for the out. So it's a one, two, three first for the Tarpons. We're going to the bottom one. Still scoreless. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on KLEB. As Joey D pointed out, we are actually on ESP in New Orleans as well as KLEB, my bad, Joey. In the bottom of the first, Riverdale is going to have Kyle Collette, Zach Schneider, and Brandon Baudry batting against Tarpon pitcher Blake O'Gell, the District 7 4 a MVP. He is winding and firing his warm-up tosses right now. Blake has only lost one game this season. That was a 1-0 game against De La Salle. His ERA, how about this? 0 .09, so it's under one, his ERA. He strikes out one batter per inning. Opponents are hitting just north of 150 against Ogell in the season, so he's done just about everything right, and he's making his throws now. And it shows you why he is a district MVP. Yep. Every stat is just as impressive as the one that you just listed, but he's got to face a good Riverdale lineup here today. If you want to watch this game, if you're not able to make it to the park, we understand we've got a lot of folks playing AAU basketball, travel baseball. You can catch us on ESPN1003.com if you want to watch this broadcast. Or YouTube, search Jerry Disclare in the search box, and this game will pop up. Went back and rewatched last night's game. Had a little sp uh, spare time after the game. That was as good on the YouTube broadcast as it was live. That was a thrilling game, and we expect another one here today. Did they uh, show the celebration? They did. When they did. We had Coach, Coach Rav looked as tired and exhausted yeah. on the broadcast as he did live. Yeah. <laughs> Hope to see it again today. <laughs> we were talking to him last night after the game and everybody had left and he is on just an energy, uh, he's cruising so high pitched and whenever the game ends and he hits that wall, he looked beat. <laughs> But he's back at it today. As Colette will stand in. The lefty batter against the lefty pitcher, O'Gell. These Colette pitched a beauty for Riverdale yesterday. The first pitch from Blake is hit foul out of play, and it'll be 0 and 1. See, Truck was smart today. He brought a baseball glove with him. There we go. So if the ball comes in, he's not even protecting himself. He's worried about that camera. <laughs> Being 0-1 from O'Gell to Colette. It's a strike, a breaking pitch. It's 0-2. O'Gell is so good when he's ahead in the count, but he's got just a filthy two-strike out pitch. Let's see if he comes with it here. He also comes with the high cheese. The 0-2 is the high cheese, and he lays back 1-2. and two. Still ahead. O'Gell winds. He delivers. And he gets his first strike out of the game. There's that breaking pitch. There's one away. Nice start for O'Gell. Yeah, there's a concern of how deep into the game he could go today. He threw 62 pitches on Tuesday. Um, but if he gets quick outs, heck, 62 pitches was enough for five innings on Tuesday. So he could get into the deep stages of this game. Figure he's good for probably 80 or 90 or so today, if I had to guess. The wind up and the pitch to Schneider shows bunt, pulls back. It's a called strike. And Schneider last night is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. I believe he was the one who hit that line drive to Petrie at third. 
Mark was charging in, but he was showing bunt. Boy, Mark played just a beautiful game at third base yesterday. The 0-1 fouled, and it'll be 0-2. So two straight batters. Blake gets ahead 0-2. If he continues to do that throughout the game, I think he's going to like the result. He's got one strikeout in the game. He's got an 0-2 count to the second hitter he faces, which is Schneider. The windup and the 0-2 wide, 1-2. We were promised food, man, and we did not get it. We're going to have to get on Coach Rav after the game. The wind up in the one two. That's wide again, two and two. Nice crowd once again for the Tarpons. Riverdale traveled better today than they did yesterday. They've got a nice little seating section down the first baseline. Tarpons came out in full force as usual. The two two. Just got a piece of it foul. Well, you'd think the Riverdale fans would travel and come and prepare for two games. Yeah. That's their thinking. I'll thinking a little bit different. We'd love to send them home after this first game. Yeah, there are a lot of good restaurants in New Orleans. We want to make sure they can make their dinner appointment. The 2-2 grounded sharply, and Joby Chevy makes a stop. He's going to try it. Oh, my, what a play. The runner is safe on the infield single, but Joby made that relatively close on the infield single. Great job defensively. Good job by Schneider running it out. Jelby showed arm strength. That, he that was a heck of a throw. Deep in the shortstop area and threw. <laughs> I thought he had no chance. And look, the runner was safe by a good step, but he made it far closer yeah. than I thought he could. Uh, it threw a long way the first. As Baudry will stand in. Riverdale threatened in the first inning yesterday. The pitch to Baudry is a strike. It's 0-1. I think Riverdale had, what, runners on first and second or first and third, something like that. They definitely threatened in the first before Gidry got out of a jam. No, that was in the third inning. I apologize. The first inning was one, two, three. The pitch to Baudry is low, one and one. Good looking pitch. Brandon, or Brendan Baudry with Diego Zapata on deck for Riverdale. The pitch fouled off of the young man, Baudry, and it'll be one and two. Baudry was also 0 for 3 last night with a strikeout. Strike How about that work? In the seven. How about that work against the top of the order for Riverdale? Yeah. Hearing a lot of 0 for 2s, 0 for 3s. Casey Gidger did a good job mowing those guys down. Ogell looks at the runner. Now the 1 2 pitch in the dirt. It's 2 and 2. Early on, his off-speed stuff is not quite popping like he would like it to, but at times he struggles a little early in the game and then finds his rhythm in the second, third, fourth innings. The 2-2. Looked pretty good there. He puts him away. Danos will throw to second, and they'll step on the back, but he had to make the tag. Tag him. Yeah, if the young man would have dropped the tag down, it's not a force play anymore. So the Tarpons make a defensive miscue there. There are two outs, but boy, they had a chance to get out of that inning, throwing out the runner at second. And heads up play by Danos behind the plate. <coughs> Missing a third strike, knowing first piece is occupied. He cannot go to first yeah. with it through the second. Just uh, Jelby forgot he had to tag him when I yeah, Looks like they thought it was a forced play, just kind of stepped on the bag. If they would have applied the tag, they would have had a good chance to get him. As Zapata will stand in, runner at second now after the stolen base, the pitch is a strike. We call out Dylan Bouvier, and he delivers every single time. Thanks for the meal, Dylan. Dylan Bouvier is the man. Deal one to Zabeda. Fouled, and it's 0-2. Ogell's one pitch away from striking out the side here, but Zapata's one swing away from giving Riverdale a first inning lead. So something's going to have to give. Last night, their first four batters in the lineup were all 0 for 3. The fifth batter was... 0 for 3, but he 0 for 2, but he got hit by a pitch. Maybe that's why they shuffled the deck a little bit today. The stretch and the 0 2 from Ogell. High, it's 1 and 2. The runner, Schneider, is taking a big secondary lead. Let's see if Danos tries to throw back behind him during the at bat sometime. The 
Ogale comes set. Looks at the runner, looks back. Now the one, two. Hit in the air to right field. Shass on charging in, that's trouble, but a nice play by Jack Blanchard going into the outfield grass and making a play to retire the side. Riverdale gets a runner to second base. Nothing on the board. We're going to the second inning, still scoreless on ESPN New Orleans. The second inning we go, Casey Gidry, Diamond, Rishu, Mark Petrie getting some swings against Rinsky, Hasashima. Casey just got with Coach Brian Colley. We're going to thank some of our sponsors here in just a minute. But we're going to start to play some baseball first. Number 13, Casey Gidry. Another nice day here in Galliano. All things considered, it's not nearly as hot as I thought it could be. The first pitch of the second inning is strokes yes. for a base hit by Casey Gidry. Stay hot, big fella. And the Tarpons have the leadoff man aboard. It's a leadoff single. Speaking of hot, Diamond Rishu has a blazing hot bat right now. He stands in. Yeah, Diamond's been swinging the bat extremely well the last couple of games. I was talking about him on Twitter last night and get to the ballpark today. He was smiling from here today. He said, hey, thanks for the shout out, bro. And on the first pitch he sees, he tattoos at the center field, but the center fielder goes back and makes the play for the out. Deepest part of the park, but another good, strong swing by Davin, one away. One out. Just get the feeling that he's going to have a big at bat in this game, and you like the way he's swinging it Just right now. Keep swinging. As Mark Petrie will stand in. Batting for the Tarpons, the third baseman, number 12, <clears throat> Mark P. Gidry will take his lead. And the pitch chopped to the third baseman who fields goods the lead runner at second. They try to go to first and get the play for the double play. So that is a 5-4-3 double play that retires the side. Riverdale is out of the second inning without any damage done. We're going to the bottom two. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans and 1600 AM KLEB. We just saw a baseball record in inning as Hasashima got out of the top of two in just three pitches, tying thousands of other guys who've yeah. done the same thing. As now it's going to be Will Flynn, Eric Chasson, and Manny Rosado batting in the bottom two for the Riverdale Rebels trying to even this series up. Because Ogell making his warm-up throws now. You see the wind picking up a little bit. Yeah. 
I want to thank some of our sponsors, State Rep, Jerry Truck, Just Clear, Catch Our Game Live on ESPN1003.com or on YouTube. Merle Norman and LaRose, a new sponsor. We want to thank them so much for joining our team. Chris Gode Investments, call the winning team at Chris Gode for all your retirement needs, 632-6049. Total Urgent Care, open seven days a week. Get in, get out, and get well. And we'll get you our video sponsors here in just a minute after the first pitch of bottom two to Will Flynn. The wind up in the pitch to Flynn is low. Want to know? Our video sponsors Thibodeau Regional Medical Center, a leader in bringing the latest and best technology to our region. Lady to see General Hospital, compassionate medicine close to home. Vision Communications, your local provider for TV, internet, home security, and automation. Learn more at viscom.net. As the 1-0 to Flynn is high, 2-0. Joe Septic Contractors, your largest sewage and portable sanitation company in Louisiana. SL Bank, your full-service financial center with five locations to better serve you. Do friend building materials with locations in Cutoff, Thibodeau, Belchase, and Slidell. Advanced Eye Institute, make the right call. Get your eyes checked by Dr. Darby on today. 2-0 pitch to Flynn as a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. Last night, Flynn was 1-2, for two, a single, and reached on error, so he's making contact with the ball. One of the few guys who had a little luck last night, and he's ahead in the count 2-1. And the pitch. Hit in the air to right field. Shafts on charging in, and it'll fall at his feet for a leadoff base hit. Base hit to right. Luke was sort of in between, taking a stab at diving at that one. He kind of pulled up. Guess you don't want a single to turn into a triple if you don't make the play. Flynn continues making contact with the ball. Yeah, Luke, Luke was kind of caught, not knowing to come up or not. Yeah, he was in no man's land. The DH for Riverdale. Let's see if they try to bunt one. The pitch inside, 1 0. Chicago was 0 for 2 with a strikeout. They tried to play some small ball yesterday. They had a hard time getting some bunts down. Ogell looks at the runner. And now the 1-0. That's a strike, 1-1. One one. Bottom two, if you're wondering, are we in New Orleans today? We are not. It's just Riverdale's the home team for this road game in the series. Game three, the Tarpons with bat in the bottom half. Pitch is high, 2-1. And, and the wind is, as Coach said, starting to blow out a little more fiercely towards Left field, you get in the air, you got a chance. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. It'll be 2 and 2. They've been late on Ogell's fastball so far today. And he's gotten a couple of strikeouts on some hooks. Let's see if he tries it again here. The stretch and the 2 2. Low, and it'll be a full count delivery now to Chacon. Did not miss by much. Nope. Riverdale got a double play in the last half inning. Let's see if the Tarpons could get a ground ball to Shelby Sheremier and Mark Petrie and try to, try to turn the trick. The 3-2, he walked them. So Riverdale's got something cooking here in the second as a base hit and a walk. Puts runners at first and second for Manny Rosado. Good news is that you're in trouble with this, the bottom of the order batting, so I guess that's a little bit of a. Rosado reached base twice yesterday, field his choice, and hit by pitch. He's trying to bunt here. Rogel steps off, bluffs a throw. What's a little concerning is Hasashima is in the nine hole. He was batting cleanup yesterday, so they obviously think he could do something with the bat if they had him there yesterday. Runners at first and second, no out. It looks like Rosado is going to be bunting here. And now he's swinging away. Takes a strike, it's 0-1. On the throwback to second, he definitely showed bunt, but that time he never put it down. And both teams are going to talk about this. Ogell is going to talk to Jacob Danos, and Riverdale is going to talk to Rosado. Yeah, good job by Ogell and, and Dan Ross here getting on the same page because I believe that second, run at second base for Riverdale may, may be trying to pick up some signals so they got to make sure they're on the same page so they don't give away what pitch is coming. That's been a problem at times this year for the Tarpons. So glad that they 
nip that in the butt. He throws or bluffs another throw, and again Rosado is showing bunt. Like maybe he's just being told to show bunt on the throwbacks to make the Tarpons think he's bunting. It'll be an 0-1 to Manny Rosado. He does show bunt. The pitch is stabbed at. Now they'll throw back behind the runner, and the Tarpons are going to kick the baseball. So Riverdale is going to get the bunt without having to give up an out. And they had him dead red, too. If they execute the play, they would have gotten an out. So defensive miscue. It will be 0-2 at the plate, but Riverdale accomplished what they were trying to accomplish without sacrificing an out. When they both hit that dirt, it took just a weird hop. Yep. See if Ogo could get a strike out here, and then it would be just like they got the bunt down. Riverdale with an early scoring chance. The 0-2. Hit in the air to left field. Bocale is charging. He makes the play for the out. They're going to come home, and they're going to cut it off. Now come to the plate, and he's safe. That will be a sacrifice fly, and I think that's a good call by yes. Blue. Surprising that Riverdale's runner at second didn't try to go to third after they threw home. But either way, Riverdale gets an early run on the sack fly. And we had as good a view as anyone on that one. I think he did beat it out. Yeah, I agree. I think he was safe. Everyone up here is agreeing. But the Tarpons did a good job defensively making it pretty close. Because now Ryan Martin will stand in. Ryan didn't play yesterday, I don't believe. And now the pitch. Foul, and so in one. And the runner at second for River, it was kind of kind of caught in the middle because if they cut the, yeah. the throw off, he's not sure they can yeah. throw it back at him or. Good really about a Tarpons. That Petrie and Kyla gave them a chance. It'd be an 0-1 count to Ryan Martin, runner at second, one out. The stretch and the pitch. It's a breaking pitch That's for a strike, 0-2. All things considered, if you have runners at second and third and no out and you only give up one run, that'd be a good thing for the Tarpons, I would think. But there's still some work to do before that happens, including this 0-2 pitch to Ryan Martin. Look at the runner. And now the pitch. Low, and it's one and two. You know, we got a lot of folks listening and watching from uh, comforts of a bus. Some students are going out to Florida today. What is that program that they're doing? Oh, Grad Bash. Grad Bash. The one, two. Curveball, he got him, no doubt about it. Three. Wicked hook, and there's two away. Two. So Dallas and Jacob Three. and all our friends here that are usually upstairs with us, I want to let you guys know that uh, we miss you guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, nobody to worry about. No, yeah, right. nobody to make fun of today. <laughs> as, <Hello>. Casey. <laughs> as Rinsuke Hasashima stands in. The pitch. Hasashima bunts it to Petrie. That's the wrong place to bunt it. He'll field and go to first in time for the out. So Riverdale has a good inning. They get a run, but the Tarpons get out of trouble. We're going to the third inning. It's one nothing for Riverdale. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans and KLEB.
I don't think the Tarpons would like to have a three-pitch inning here offensively. I think they're going to like to work the count. Jack Blanchard, Luke Chasson, and Bo Colley will stand in. But in the top of the third inning, Riverdale leads one to nothing on a sacrifice fly off the bat of Manny Rosado. Jack Blanchard will stand in. That's how tall Rinsky is. Blanchard. Pitcher, how? Huh? I would say shorter than me, so that's five seven ish. Pitch to Jack is a strike. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, I don't think he's. I'm five nine. I, I would think I'm a little taller than he is. He's throwing hard though, despite a small frame. The 0 1 to Jack is wide, just wide, one and one. He's got kind of an awkward delivery. He's kind of sometimes comes with a little bit of a sidearm look. The 1-1, one, one. swing and a miss, 1-2, and two. there was some cheese, and Blanchard was a little late. Luke Chasson on deck. Hasashima delivers the 1-2 pitch. Line sharply to the third baseman who fields clean, throws to first in time for the out, but Jack put a good charge into that one. Will Flynn was just Johnny on the spot, made the play through it to Baudry. And Tarpon's formula for success, keep swinging, and keep hitting the ball. It'll and break for you. Right fielder number 17, Luke Here's a guy we'd like to get going, Luke Chasson. In a spot start today, there's the pitch as a strike 0-1. And we've seen many times the Tarpons when he stay away from striking out of the plate, they can uh, produce. Luke the lefty against the lefty pitcher, Hasashima the 0-1. Thought about offering, but pulled back. That was a wise decision because the pitch was a ball, one and one. We were told that this is the best pitcher that Riverdale has gotten. We're seeing it early. The one one is low, two and one. Bocale on deck for Big Blue. Two one pitch to Luke. Swings, chops it over the pitcher. The second baseman charges, makes the play for the out, two way. Now Bocale will stand in. Batting for the Tarpon. The left fielder, number six, Bocale. Looks like the second time through the order, the Tarpons are going to have to maybe make some adjustments. But right now we're seeing some lazy ground balls and some unproductive at bats. First pitch to Kale is a curveball for a strike, 0 and 1. I think I got the proper pronunciation on the young man's first name from their crowd, the 0 1. I think it's Rinsuke as the pitch is a strike to Kale, 0 and 2. Rinsuke? Rinsuke, which would make sense. Yeah, exactly, it does. And the 0 2 pitch. Line to right field, and Bocale has a base hit. Which for the Tarpons, of course, you know that means that Bo may be active on the bases. He's maybe the best runner on the team. Good job there by Bo. And once again, he keeps making his case for all comments we make about the best nine hole yep. hitter in the state. I would like to see one better. Very consistent. J.D. will stand in. Bocale runs well. Do they try to make some two-out magic here? Huge lead. And they'll throw back. He's in safe. Tarpon's looking to erase that one-run deficit. They fell behind by a run yesterday and then took it back in the next half inning. The pitch. Swing and a miss. So in one. Hasashima is holding on runners much better than Colette did yesterday. The Tarpons were able to get just huge jumps off of Colette. The runner goes this time. The 0-1 lined into center field. The center fielder will make the play and will retire the side. So the Tarpons get a runner aboard, nothing across. We're going to bottom three. Riverdale leads 1-0. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans and 1600 AM KLEB.
the bottom three, we go Riverdale is going to have the top of their order. Kyle Collette, Zach Schneider, and Brendan Baudry against Blake O'Gell with the Riverdale Rebels on top, one nothing here. In the second round of the playoffs of Class 4A, game two of this series, the Tarpons hold a one game to nothing lead. Heck, we've played now nine and a half innings. We've only seen four runs combined between these two teams. That'll show the quality of pitching that we've gotten so far in this series. It also shows that every run that you get is super duper valuable because heck, there's not going to be a lot of them after that. Adding for the Rebels, the center fielder, number 15, Kyle Collette. Of course, judging by the way things go up here now that I just said that, it's probably going to turn into an 11 to 9 game as the first pitch is hit foul out of play 0 and 1. Collette struck out earlier in the game. The wind up. And O'Gell's 0 1. Hit in the air lazily. That may be trouble. It's dropping, and that's oh. going to be a foul ball by about a foot. Colette nearly had a leadoff double. It fell right in between Bo Colley and Mark Petrie, who were both charging, but it was to the left of that third base line. We had a play just like that yesterday down the first baseline when South Lafouche was batting. That was just foul. The 0-2 from O'Gell. Outside, 1-2. and two. Danos is doing a good job lining up off the plate. He's maybe going to have to learn the art of cheating and framing that one back a little bit. The 1-2 is hitting the air to left field. Bocale charging it. And he makes a diving try, but the ball falls safe. Bo did everything he could, but that one just kind of popped out of the glove. It would be a base hit for Colette. Colette with the single. Yeah, great effort by, uh, by Bo diving for the ball. And unfortunately, when he, ball, he caught the ball, I believe, actually, but the ball, when the glove popped hit the out. ground, just popped out. <laughs> Not much you can do on that one. Schnatter will stand in. He has an infield single in the game. as Riverdale threatening again? Their leadoff hitter on base, you would think he probably runs well if he's batting leadoff. We'll see. The pitch is wide, 1-0. Oh. We'll see if they get creative and try any wrinkles. O'Gall throws back. He had him leaning, but the runner does get back in time. Collette with a huge lead at first. O'Gale almost made him pay for it. He's picked off a couple this year. Runner shows bunt. The runner's gone. They pull back. It's a strike, and he takes second base. And they took that one on the pitcher because he was almost on second base. That was one of those situations that I would like to see the Tarpons do the same where the runner's gone and I know you're trying to protect the batter but if he's got the bag stolen just pull it back let him have it he was showing bunt again but Blake bluffed the throw back Dan is going to give some infield defense signals to his guys as the Rebels trying to get it one run at a time, West Coast baseball. It's just not a bad idea against a pitcher as good as O'Gell. They'll throw back and the runner's safe. That was the defensive play yesterday where we saw the guys collide. Remember that? A lot of guys moving around, a lot of moving parts. Yesterday, Joe Bichermi just ran right into the base runner as he was going back to the bag. The 1-1, one, one. he gets the bunt down. O'Gell is going to field. He's going to go to first where Blanchard's covering. So it's a sack bunt for the Rebels, and there's one away. And Baldry will stand in. Riverdale coaching staff showing a lot of confidence in their pitcher. Just trying to get an extra extra run. He, he may feel confident with a 2 nothing if this run comes across. Lead on the Tarpons. 
The Tarpons are showing some confidence in Riverdale's pitcher as well. As they're playing the infield in here, they don't want to fall behind 2-0 in the early stages. The pitch, high 1-0. Good news is Baudry has struck out once in the game. We love a strikeout here. The bad news is that he's a three-hole hitter, so he does handle the bat very well. The 1-0. Curveball nice. and a beauty, one and one. Riverdale has a one-nothing lead. They have the second run potentially of the game over at third base. There's one out, and Brendan Baudry at the plate. And the 1-1 one, one fouled out of play. It'll be 1-2. and two. Barger just stabbed at it to keep stay alive. Protecting the plate with two strikes. See if Ogell could dig deep and find that hook for the strikeout here. And the 1-2. It is the hook, but it's oh. high. 2-2. Two and two. Fans have quieted down here, focusing all their attention on this 2-2 pitch from Blake Ogata, Brendan Baudry in the bottom three. Time called at the plate. And now he gets back on the diamond again. Ogata's 2-2. Hit in the air to left field. Kyle's going back. He makes the play for the out, but Riverdale's going to get the run across on their second sacrifice fly of the game. But give them credit. They're taking advantage of their opportunities, and it's 2-0. Rule the sacrifice fly. Station to station baseball. Well, he worked out for Riverdale. Button the runner over the third and one out. Get the side fly. And Zapata will stand in. So this is the biggest lead either team has had in the series of two-run advantages. The Zapata stands in, lines it to Blanchard, fields clean, goes to first in time for the out. So the Riverdale gets a run. It's time to get on the sticks. It's 2-0 in favor of the Rebels. We're going to the fourth inning here on ESPN New Orleans. We're behind two runs. It's 2 nothing Riverdale, top of four. Tarpons have the heart of their order. Austin Cantrell, Blake Ogell, Casey Goodry against Rinsuke Hasashima for the Rebels. He was advertised as a tough customer, and he's been one so far. It's the first pitch to Cantrell it is a strike, 0-1. One, oh Austin grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. And the pitch. Low. This guy's changing his arm angles in the middle of that bats, and it's a different look every time. He definitely knows what he's doing out there. The 1-1. One, one. Hit in the air on a rope, but that's the oh. type of night it's been for the Tarpons right at him. To Martin, one away. Austin tattooed that one, but Ryan Martin literally had to move about a step out there in left field. Now Ogell will stand in. Well, we've seen this from the Tarpons earlier, just hitting the ball right at people and just 
keep doing it, it's going to fall for you. No drop eventually. Ogil swings at the first pitch, pops it straight up in the air. The catcher makes the play for the out. Now Casey Guidry will stand in. And you could see that Riverdale's defense is much more confident with Hasashima on the mound as well. They've got a little pep to their step and a little life. He's working quick, giving them confidence, and they're paying it back. The pitch to Guidry is wide, 1-0. Casey has had some luck today. He had a base hit to left field his first time up. Hit it through the infield, and it bled into the outfield. And the 1-0 inside corner for a strike, 1-1. One one. Casey thought it was going to hit him, but then it tailed back to the black of the inside portion of the plate. And the 1-1, one swing and a miss, 1-2. Casey's got a battle back behind in the count. He gets a good pitcher. Steps back into the batter's box. The stretch and the one two. That's why. Now it's two and two. Diamond Rishu on deck. He hit one a laser beam out to the center fielder who again hardly had to move. Just gotta start finding those seams. The two two. Chopped just foul to the left of the third base bag. It'll stay two and two. This reminds me a little bit of the Vanderbilt game on the road where Vanderbilt was just kind yep. of bleeding some early runs across. Tarpons were hitting it hard, not having any luck. In that game, South LaFouche scored, what, seven or eight runs in one inning? Yeah, when it broke, it broke. But they're facing a tough pitcher today, the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, and that'll retire the side. The Tarpons go up and down in order. We're going to the bottom four. Trevor Deal 2, Tarpon 0. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans and 1600 AM KLEB. Any NFL draft fans out there, the Dallas Cowboys have just traded for Tavon Austin of the Los Angeles Rams. It's sort of been the big news of the day today. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm a Cowboys fan, and I'm kind of mixed emotions on that. So I don't think Tavon Austin's any good. <laughs> we'll see, I guess, whenever we get to the fall. Looking to see if the Saints have made a pick yet today. As we're now in the fourth round. Here it's 2-0. Riverdale leads in the bottom four. I think the Saints did pick. Uh, Rick Leonard of Florida State, offensive tackle. Yeah. So they have made a selection added to their team. Here, Will Flynn will lead off the inning. And for the Rebels, the third baseman, number five, Will Flynn. Hogel trying to have a clean inning. Keep his team within striking distance. The pitch is hit in the air to center field. Should be routine. Cantrell calling him off. One pitch, one out. Austin Cantrell fields the ball for out number one. Now Shakan will stand in. I see Deputy Cooks has a plate full of crawfish. Somebody's bottling some crawfish out there. Now Shakan will stand in. He walked earlier in the game. The wind up and the pitch. There's a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Oh, 
Pugel staring into the glove. Now he's got his pitch, the 0-1. Hit in the air. Will it stay in play? Yes. It will. Damon Rishu will make the play. Actually, that would have been a fair ball. The wind blew it back into fair territory, but it is a routine out two way. Damon Rishu for out number two. Thought for a minute it'd be by the dugout area, but that breeze blew it back. Actually, it would have been a fair ball had it dropped. The Rebels, the catcher, number 18, Manny Rosado. And Rosado will stand in. He had one of the two sacrifice flies in the game for the Rebels. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, so in one. Coach Gougeau was trying to get the outfielders to come in a little bit here against Rosado, positioning their outfield defense. And they have the 0-1 hit in the air, and it looks like they were positioned perfectly. Good job, Coach. That's going to be a routine fly ball out, and it'll retire the side. So it's a quick inning for the Tarpons defensively. It's getting late early. We're going to the fifth, 2-0 Riverdale. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans. All right, we've got nine outs to play with. Davin Rishu, Mark Petra, Jack Blanchard. Tarpon's got to score two runs to tie. Three to take the lead against Rensuke Hasashima for Riverdale. They lead two to nothing here in the top of five. Get the vote today. Remind everybody, thanks Joey D, that there are some millages and different things on the ballot. So if you're here at the park listening, please go vote today. Our firemen need your help. Exercise your right to vote. That last commercial came at the perfect time for you to count to 10 and calm down and offer the Cowboys trade. Yeah, I needed it, man. I needed a pacifier, something to yeah. ease me into that news of the trade. Yeah, perfect timing. But then I started thinking about how good the Rockets are, and it, it eased me a little bit. It's the first pitch to Rishu with a Not strike going yet. one. <laughs> Stretch and the pitch. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Keep waiting for Hasashima to leak oil a little bit, but it ain't happening. He is getting stronger as this game goes on. He's throwing a lot of strikes, challenging the hitters. It'd be an 0 and 2. Outside, 1 and 2. If you're keeping track of his pitches, he hadn't thrown a bunch, I wouldn't think, huh? Yeah, he's no. not even to 50 yet. The one two hit in the air to left center field. That's a solid base hit for Davin Rishu, who again goes to the opposite field, just like he's been coached to do for the last several weeks. <clears throat> Davin continues his hot streak, swinging the bat extremely well for the Tarpons. Coach Chandler and Coach Justin and Coach Rav have been working tirelessly to get that young man to just flip the ball to left field. He's strong enough to get it out there with some authority, and he just showed it again. He had an opposite field hit yesterday and again today as Petrie will stand in. Pitch is wide, 1-0. Talked about how good Hasashima has been. He's also not been under any stress. The Tarpons really haven't had any threatening innings. Let's see if they could make the foundation shake a little bit here. The pitch. Runner was gone. It was a hit and run, and he fouls it into the screen one and one. This is a guy that you can hit and run on because even when his pitches are outside of the strike zone, they're not outside of the strike zone by much. You know you're going to get something that you could at least put the bat on. The 
the 1-1. One, one. Well, as I say that, he's way wide, 2-1. and one. Never fails. Torbins haven't had a home run in a while. We would we would take that. Yeah, now it's gonna happen. <laughs> he throws it to first. He's in safe. <clears throat> Mark Petrie. We talked a lot. Taylor Griffin and I did during the girls' basketball season about some of the underrated players on that team. Mark Petrie's an underrated player here for this baseball team. As that one's fouled out of play, it's two and two. You got to have star players, but you got to have surrounding players as well. And Mark Petrie is a guy that he's pitched well at times. He's been a great glove out at third base. He's been a steady five, six hole hitter. Just a solid high school yeah, baseball consistent. player. Consistent. The 2 2. Swing and a miss, and they'll throw it back behind the runner who's in safe. Dangerous, though, as there's now one out. Now Jack Blanchard will stand in. Jack grounded out to the third baseman. In the third inning. Yep, Tarpons have not had guys in scoring position often today. They plan to be aggressive on the bases, just haven't had enough runners to carry it out. As that pitch is fouled 0 and 1. Davin with a huge lead at first base and he thought the guy was going to try and make a pickoff move to first, and he dove back to second as the <laughs> ball was crossing home plate. <laughs> but he had a, a very big lead. This will be an 0 1 count to Jack. Here in the top of five, Riverdale protecting a two run lead. Here's the pitch. Hit him. We'll take that, and the Tarpons will get the second base runner aboard. And Chasson will stand in. It's a big spot here for Luke. He grounded out his first time up, but there are two runners aboard, and now he's got a chance to deliver a strike to Hasashima. Let's see how the pitcher handles what's maybe some of the most adversity he's faced today. Pitch to Luke. Wide, 1-0. Oh. Now the young man for Riverdale did throw on Tuesday. I don't know if he's showing a little fatigue here, but now he's getting a little wider, working a little slower. The 1-0. Oh. That's low, 2-0. Oh. See, he's starting to stretch. He doesn't look nearly as comfortable as he did earlier in the game. And I think here, 2 0 Chasson may be seeing one into the glove. Unless if it's really juicy right in your wheelhouse. 2 0. He has a strike. He was taken all the way. 2 and 1. Bocale on deck. Had a solid base hit to right field. His first time up. Hasashima stretching. And the 2 1. Wide, three and one. Crowd for the first time today has an excuse to make a little noise. Runners at first and second, one out. Chasson ahead in the count, three one. Everyone on the edges of their seats. The pitch. He walked him. The Tarpons have the bases loaded. They've been waiting for an excuse to. Get rowdy, and now they have an opportunity here. Bo Kale will stand in. The bases are full of tarpons. And again, Bo presents a number of things that he can do for the tarpons. He's a threat to do a lot of different things offensively here. Hasashima's pitch. Low, 1-0. and oh. I'm taking until he throws a strike here. The young man is losing steam pretty quickly. The 1-0. -oh. Hit him. Hit him. The Tarpons are on the board. It's 2-1. to one. That's an RBI for Bo Colley wearing one on the thigh. And now it's 2-1. to one. 
Davin Rishu touches home plate as now Jacob Danos will stand in and Riverdale is either talking to their pitcher or making a change here. The young man threw 100 plus on Tuesday and he's leaking oil everywhere right now. He's their ace, so I understand it's hard to take him out of the game here if he feels like he's still got something left to give. But the eye test also shows that he is obviously tiring out here. And our coach before the game was talking, uh, he was battling uh, a stomach virus before the game. So and these pitches in his heat may be getting Yeah, the alert. hydration becomes a factor. The two to one, the score, Jacob Danos will stand in. And this is also going to be the third time he's going to have to face that lineup. It's a lengthy meeting. And it will not result in a pitching change. The bases are still loaded. And the guy probably with the biggest smile in the park right now is Blake O'Gelb as he's got a chance to maybe get himself back into a good position on the mound here. J.D. struck out, lined out in the game. He's 0 for 2. Hasashima after the meeting, the pitch. He has a strike, 0 and 1. Another stretch. And the 0 1 to J.D. Swing and a miss. That was way outside. J.D. offered at a bad one there. It's 0 and 2. So he's got to protect now. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. A huge, capital H, huge strikeout for Insuke Hasashima. Wow. Get the leadoff batter in three pitches. As now Cantrell will stand in. Austin hit a laser beam to left field his last time, but it was right at the left field. If he could split the outfield on another one here, they'd be running for days. Wide, 1-0. Still have the luxury of patience here. There's a walk is a run. A walk is an RBI right now. The 1-0. That's a strike. 1-1 one one to Austin. He may have been taken all the way. Cantrell looking to come through. Actually, Cantrell doesn't have a base hit yet in this series. I'll show you he's due. The stretch and the 1-1. One, one. Low, 2-1. and one. Austin now ahead in the count. Catcher going to go talk to the pitcher, Hasashima. That meeting's going to be wrapping up momentarily. The Tarpons have one across in the half inning. It's 2-1 to one Riverdale, top of five. The bases are loaded with two outs for Austin Cantrell. Blake O'Gall on deck. Big pitch here. You definitely do not want to get three and one. And so Austin may be looking for something to drive. Yep. Some room in right center. Should he opt to take a shot out there? The runners will be going on contact. The 2-1. That's a strike on the outside corner, two and two. Everyone getting back into position. The Riverdale fans now excited at the idea of maybe getting out of this jam. Cantrell going to try to battle back. The two, two. Hit in the end of right field, and it's dropped by the second baseman. He goes to first in time for the out, so no one's going to score. Riverdale threatened to kick that one away, but they end up making the nice play and retiring the side. We're going to the bottom of the five. The Rebels lead two to one. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans.
Bottom five, Ryan Martin, Rinsuke Hasashima, and Kyle Collette against top and pitcher Blake Ogel. Two to one, Riverdale out in front. For the folks uh, listening on the radio, that last play was a line shot to D Diego Zapata, who kind of kicked it a little bit, but still had the presence of mind to find the ball, had time, made a throw to first. Cantrell kind of slid feet first into the bag, I guess expecting the throw may take the first baseman off the bag. But it didn't, and then Riverdale gets out of big trouble, but the Tarpons cut the lead in half. And did he throw that ball from his knees? Yeah, he right. did. <clears throat> Beautiful defensive play. And, and then last night, the Tarpon defense kept them in the game, allowed them to eventually win the game. This game here, Riverdale was playing some uh, exceptional defense. But of concern to them is the arm of Hasashima because he looked yep. like he was slowing down. They've still got six outs to get. Which means that Ogell's job here is simple. Get out of this fifth inning clean. Keep the momentum in your dugout. Yeah, I had him for 24 pitches that last inning. The pitch to Martin. Grounded slowly, a little cue ball shot. Petrie charges, goes to first, gets him by a step. As we said yesterday, honorable, honorable mention all district my foot. That young man is a very, very good third baseman. And Hasashima will stand in. He bunted one right to Petrie his last time up. We call it every district game. I like to see who, who's a better third baseman. DeSandro from E.D. White's pretty good. But I don't know. I guess he was first team if I had to guess. I don't know who second team would have been. I, first pitch to Hasashima is a strike. The wind up in the 0-1. Lined through the infield. That's a base hit for Hasashima. And now Colette will stand in. Now we know from yesterday Hasashima runs well, but we also know he's pitching in the game. So how much energy do they want to use with him on the bases? It doesn't look like they're running for him. Which is kind of a risky move, I guess. Huh? You would want him to save every speck of energy he has left, not have him out in the sun right now. And he almost got picked off. He throw back and he's in save. Now, keep throwing the ball to first. Let him use some of that energy up. Yeah, and then they throw back in. And you I know. think that's exactly what Coach Rav is doing. If you've got a quarter tank left, you're going to use a little bit of it diving into first base four or five times. He'll throw back again. It's not a hot day, but it's a very warm day here. It's a, I guess, probably cooler than usual for a late April day here in Louisiana in the low 80s. Pitch shows bunt, pulls back. They'll throw it a second, and that's a throw that sailed on Danos. And that's why they weren't running for Hasashima. He takes second base. And again, using up more energy, so... We'll see the next half inning if that's going to pay off for the Tarpons. Call it now with a runner in scoring position. He has a base hit to left field and a strikeout in the game. Ogell looks at the runner now to the plate. It's a curveball. It's a strike. Nice. One and one. Riverdale fans thought that one was a little high. Hogel with the baseball. Shaking off his catcher twice. Now he's got the one that he wants. And the 1-1. One, one. He wanted the heater and it was a good decision, but he fouled it away, one and two. After the heater, especially when he gets a little bit of a later swing, he likes to come back, change up, get him to be way out in front. Let's see if he tries that here. Okay, out with the baseball. His pace is slowed a little bit here because he knows the importance of this half inning. The one, two. Curveball, got him. Good pitch, pitch two away. Right, three. And now Schnatter will stand in. Zach Schnatter has an infield single and a sack punt in the game. Right fielder number 21, Zach Schnatter. In case you may want to watch, there's a B right there. Easy. 
<laughs> I have to look because I am legitimately <laughs> allergic. And no, he's just ribbing me as usual. Line drive to Petrie. He'll go to first, and the Tarpons get out of the jam. It's two to one, Riverdale. We're going to the sixth inning. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans. <laughs> Sixth inning, we're officially in the late stages. Riverdale leads two to one. The Tarpons are going to send the heart of their order, Ogal Gidry and Rishu, up against Rinsuke Hasashima. He's been on the mound throughout for the Rebels. Figure we go to Twitter and check the scoreboard here, see if we could find anything noteworthy for the listeners at home. I got one for you. Number 27 seed Buckeye beats Northwood Shreveport. The 11 seed swept them. Wow. <laughs> Eight, three, and seven to two. Ogell swings at the first pitch, pops it a mile in the air. Hasashima Probably calling everybody try. off, and he makes a backhanded stab. That was not an easy play, but there's one away. In softball, Morgan City, that's a district team. They're advancing to the finals. They beat West of Wachita 10 to one in the semis. So Morgan City's one win away from the championship. The now Casey Gidry will stand in. Tarpons, you want to be patient here offensively as that pitch to Casey is a strike, 0 and 1. Saints just picked uh, a safety from Wisconsin. Okay. Jamerson. Safety is, a, I guess, a position of depth after uh, losing the Caro, the 0 1. 1-1, one one, that was wide. Gidry trying to look for something to drive. The 1-1, one one, that is wide, 2-1. and one. He was so good on the mound yesterday. He definitely deserved to get the result that he got in the late stages, the 2-1. That's a strike on the inside corner. It's two and two. So a little bit of a battle here between Gidry and the pitcher. The two-two is a ball, and I think we just got away with one. I don't know where that one missed. <laughs> It'll be a full count. Full count. This is when you see. Should have been a strikeout. Now something good is going to happen for the Tarpons. Either that or you better swing because I think the umpire may be aware. The 3-2 chopped to the third baseman. Fields clean, and I think that's probably the result that we should have had anyway. There's two away. Because now Davin Rishu will stand in. In 5A action, number 12, Denham Springs tied the series with Captain Shreve with an 8-1 victory this afternoon. Barb, number four, seed sweeps Live Oak. Big surprise, Barb is really good at baseball, <laughs> as they always are. Pitch to Davin is wide, 1-0. Davin flew out on a rope to the center fielder and hit a opposite field base hit to left field in the game. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One one. Sam Houston beats uh, sweeps Lafayette in 5A. The 1-1 pitch to Davin. I think he got a piece of it, foul, one and two. 
So whatever poise the young man Hasashima lost in the fifth inning, he's got it back in the sixth. He's working quick again. Looking for his sign. The one-two hit foul out of play, and it'll stay one-two. If Riverdale holds on, we'll water the field, reset the lineup cards, and then play baseball again in about, what, probably about 30, 45 minutes after. I believe it's 30 minutes. 30 minutes. The one-two. Swing and a miss. He retires the side. So Riverdale's going to be batting in the bottom sixth with a two-to-one lead. You're listening to Varsity Baseball on ESPN New Orleans. Bottom six, Riverdale leads two to one. They're sending Brendan Baudry, Diego Zapata, and Will Flynn, three, four, and five, up against Tarpon pitcher Blake Ogell, who has pitched well. Just Riverdale has taken advantage of their opportunities a little better than the Tarpons have, and they have the one run lead. For South Lafouche in the seventh, it'd be Petrie, Blanchard, and Chasson. But Coach Rav is Bit of a wizard at mixing and matching in the late innings. I don't know if he'd be pinch running, pinch hitting. I'm sure he would do something to try to muster a run. Tarpons need to get this leadoff man out. Uh, yep. Both runs for Riverdale came when they got their leadoff man on to start the inning. Including one off the bat of Baudry who stands in. He has one of the sack flies in the game. The pitcher, Mogel, is a strike 0-1. Ogell's not disappointed. He's pitched well today. Just needs a little pickup from his offense. The wind up in the 0-1. Wide, just wide, 1-1. One one. Coming set now, winding and firing to the plate. It's a strike on the outside corner. If Riverdale gets the final three outs, Coach Raff told me last night the plan was to pitch Bocale in game three and then just have everybody available on a as-needed, necessary basis. Time call would be one and two. No, Cantrell has not been used in this series. Well, heck, Tarbins haven't used a reliever at all in this series. Gidry went the distance. And the one two from Ogell, foul out of play, and it'll stay one and two. And then for Riverdale, I was talking to their coach, just kind of small talk, and he said that they would be sort of the same approach. It would be kind of a, a committee of guys. The one two, grounded up the middle to Shelby Sheremy Fields. Goes to first in time for the out, one away. So I think the key, if there is a third game, is just whichever team finds the hot arm first may have a big advantage. But we're not giving up on this one yet. There's one away in the bottom six. Riverdale only leads by a run. As the Peta stands in. The lined up and the pitch. Hit hard, but right at Ooh. Petrie, who stabs it out of the air, two away. It's just one web gem after another out there for that young man at third. 
And now Will Flynn will stand in. Back for the Rebels, the third baseman, number five, Will Flynn. Flynn has a base hit and a fly out in the game. It's the pitch. High, 1-0. Hogel's pitch counter is actually staying pretty good, too. The late innings, he's gotten a lot of quick outs. The 1 0 foul into the screen, 1 and 1. He's around the 70 pitch mark. Which, on top of a 60 pitch showing on Tuesdays. Probably a little bit higher than that. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sure I missed a few. The 1 1. That's low. Two and one. So Tarpons need to get a clean out here without anything coming on the board, and then they need to get to the sticks in the seventh. Or else we'll have to do it all over again. The two one pitch. High, three and one. To Will Flynn, the third baseman for Riverdale, who will in his own right, has made some pretty nice defensive plays today. The 3-1. And he walked him. It's a two-out walk for the Rebels. And now Shakan will stand in. I think that's the first walk of the game. Nope, Shakan drew a walk. That's good pitching, though, because Gidry didn't have a walk yesterday. O'Gell's got just two today. That's only two free passes you've allowed, and now almost two full games. You could live with that. Yeah, two walks, four strikeouts. Pitch to Chacon is wide, 1-0. Don't want a two-out rally here. Get yourself back into that shade. Let your offense try to win it for you. The 1-0 pitch hitting the air. Foul out of play into the street will be 1-1. One one. Maybe not the best hand-eye coordination from the folks out there. Ball landed a good 30 yards away, and they thought that it was right on him. She didn't drop a cigarette. <laughs> and the 1-1. One, one. Low, 2-1. and one. I always have to chuckle because I make fun of the people, but if that ball was ever coming my way, I'm dropping headset and everything and getting out of the way. So, Shakan ahead in the count, 2-1. Start calling you Flash. <laughs> they throw back the first and he's in there. Showing him quick reflexes. Calling me Flash. <clears throat> Not wearing the right color. Not that Flash. <laughs> the 2 1 pitch. Grounded foul into the tarp and dugout. It'll be 2 and 2. A lightning. I see some folks driving back in from Thailand. It would have been a good day to play some golf today. Goodness. It, Gentle breeze and some warm sun. Ogell trying to get the strike out to Shakan. The runner at first takes his lead. The 2-2 is -two. a hook that Denton missed by much. My goodness, it'll be a full count. Maybe a little high. But now the runner is going to be going with the full count two out pitch. And here it is. It's hit in the air. Tarpon outfielders chasing it down. Chasson makes the play and retires the side. We've got to get some runs. We're going to the seventh inning. Riverdale leads 2-1. to one. We're hoping for a dramatic finish here on ESPN New Orleans. Advanced.
So we've got a Tarpon Chan here as top of the seventh inning. South Lafouche down by a run. The bottom of the order is going to have to make some magic. Mark Petrie, Jack Blanchard, Luke Chasson are due up, but we see Thomas LeBlanc with a bat in his hands. We'll see where in the inning he's going to be batting. And Bo Colley making some soft tosses out in the outfield as well. So if there's a bottom of seven, he may be asked to close this thing out. Tarpon fans get loud. They want to run or two two runs. They want to go home. Need some base runners first. Rensuke Hasashima, tip your cap. He's pitched beautifully today. Let's see if the Tarpons could deliver one final blow. Petrie grounded into double play and struck out, and he fouls off a pitch here. It's 0-1. Bo Collier would like to ideally go in the bullpen to warm up, but he's due up fourth in this inning, so he can't stray that far away. <clears throat> It'll be 0-1 to Petrie. And the 0-1 chopped foul, and it'll be 0-2. See some students out in right center field. Looks like, what, Arnold on the win. A couple of other guys out there having a good time. Good group out in right field. Another group of students down the right field line. The 0-2 is... Outside, one and two. Petrie has to protect that plate. That was an awfully close one there, but he showed good command of the zone. The pitch jammed and popped yeah, yeah. foul, and it'll get out of play. Heads up, and a good play. No, he dropped it. I thought the Riverdale fan made a nice play. So that'll be an E on the fan in the Reds cap. It'll be one and two again to Petrie. And here it is. Wide, two and two. Catcher keeps flinching, trying to throw that ball down to third. That one was wide by a good bit, though. You don't want to keep showing up that umpire. Yes, exactly. Two, two to Mark. Got him that time on the inside corner, one away. So if the Tarpons don't get a run here, here's what's going to happen. We're going to go off the air for about 20 minutes or so, switch over. The second game would be on AM, so we're going to have to change our equipment up a little bit. But I promise you we will have the second game here if there is one as Jack Blanchard stands in. Here's the pitch. Fouled off of Jack. It'll be 0-1. Still have two outs left. Yep, indeed. Try and get that run. At least one to extend and hopefully stop him in the bottom. Blanchard. Good contact hitter. The 0 1 pitch. Low, 1 and 1. Hasashima empty in the tank. The 1 1. Line heads, heads up and it'll be one and two. This is another really good game here between these teams. Well played game, not a lot of errors. Good pitching, guys throwing strikes. Got a final score for you after this. The one two to Blanchard. Why two and two? What you got? West Washita, eight, South Terrebonne, two. So the winner of this series will face West Washita. 2-2 two -two pitch to Blanchard. Swing and a miss, two away. Tarpon's down to their final out. If Riverdale wins this series, they're going to West Washita. If South Lafouche wins this series, West Washita's coming here. So you got to think they're probably watching on YouTube rooting for the guys in red right now. <laughs> As Luke Chasson stands in, he's walked and grounded out. The pitch is a strike, 0 and 1. The bottom of the order has come through so many times that we need a base runner here in the worst way. The stretch and the 0 1. Check swing, and they say he went around, 0 and 2.
So Hasashima is one out away. The Riverdale fans to our right making some noise, egging him on. The stretch and the pitch. That's wide, one and two. Down to the final strike. Shasta behind in the count, one and two. Here it is. Grounded foul down the first baseline, and we'll do it again. On deck is Bo Kale in the hole, Jacob Danos. Pitcher has the baseball in his mitt. The one-two pitch to Shasta. Swing and a miss, and he struck out the side in the seventh inning. And Riverdale has just evened up this series. Both teams have a two-to-one win. Coach, I guess some final thoughts as Riverdale comes on the road as the home team and gets a big two-to-one win. Well, you, you have to give River, Riverdale credit for coming in, uh, losing a heartbreaker last night, having to travel and come back early today for the second game. And again, you, you look at it, Tarpins struck out seven times at the plate. And again, that's not a formula for their success. And Ogel pitched a great game, only allowing two runs. It's just the Tarpins could not find it, uh, the runs to give them and, uh, and extend the game, at least in this half inning. So we'll do this. Riverdale gets a two-to-one win. We're going to have to switch over to the AM, so we've got to make some equipment changes here. So we're going to sign off for a good 20, 25 minutes or so. The next game's going to begin in about 30 minutes. Thanks, Joey D, pushing the buttons. Thanks to truck work and the camera. We're going to be right back, guys, but Riverdale evens up this series. And at, in 30 minutes, we're going to be rocking and rolling. So you figure a 3-10 first pitch. And uh, we'll be right back, guys.